Godzilla monsters, this little monster girl Desi, coming at ya. And guess who finally watched Sandersides? It's like Ed's World, Sandersides is something I've seen around but never actually bothered to look into until recently. In fact, that's actually how I ended 2020, by binge-watching all those Sandersides episodes. Though I literally replayed both the animatic and the puppet episode for at least an hour before I actually binged the rest of the episodes. And it put me on such a creativity high that I couldn't help but make my own sides. The funny thing is, my OC, or Monster Sona Calliope, was actually created for similar reasons. To help cope with my depression that I was going through at the time, my creative writing teacher actually suggested that I explain what depression felt like. And this caused me to create a character I called Star, which looked like a younger version of myself, and Shadow. Not the most creative names and pretty self-explanatory when you take into account what I'm talking about, but I was proud of them at the time. Though I only used them once and after that I got sucked into fandom work and just kept going on with that. But all that said, today I'm going to be drawing different sides of myself based on the Sander sides. Though unlike Thomas Sanders, I'll be using different kinds of monsters and creatures for my versions. Now originally Calliope was meant to be all the darker sides of myself. In high school, I had come up with a whole thing, I guess. I don't know how else to call it. Where a person would have a blight and a light. Obviously, their light would be the thing that they strive to be, or something that helps them do better. And the blight was obviously all the bad things in their life whether they were going through depression, or any kind of mental problems, anxiety, stuff like that. And obviously Calliope was supposed to be my blight. But in this, I decided to make her my creativity. Since she's the first monster design that I decided to be extremely creative with. From the general shape of her character, as well as the fact that even though she's spotted, she has a long stripe around her tail that makes it look like a candy cane, but tears off into little spots like a paint horse, while still keeping a few characteristics from her original designs. Part of the reason that I decided to make her Calliope instead of designing a whole new monster for my creativity is because Calliope was originally supposed to be that pest. That pesky, bad feeling that was always hanging over my shoulder. But recently I've discovered that, in general, being an artist kind of... Well, it kind of sucks in a few places. From quickly losing inspiration from something that I was drawing, to getting inspired to do too many things at once, and not being able to enjoy cartoons, because the first thing I do is try and figure out how they did all the stuff that they animated from pointing out little flaws in old cartoons. Yeah, it's not fun to watch something for the first time anymore. You gotta watch it at least three times before you can shake off the whole analyzing business mode. But since my creativity is still a really big part of me, that's why between my, per my persona design to my monster sona design, they are the ones that look the closest. I hope I said that right. And next up we have Estella, which obviously is loosely based off of Star and the original design for that. If I can find that old picture from my DeviantArt, which hopefully it still is up, I'll put it up on the screen so you guys can see. But for this one, I actually based her on the has -been Hotel cherubs, or hell of a boss cherubs. I don't know, I'm not saying words correctly as well as the whole pastel girl maker, which is an app if you didn't know. One thing that I always really love and which makes me feel happy are pastel colors and due to the fact that I was attempted to be brought up religious, 
cherubs were supposed to be something good, even though if you actually look up what they're traditionally supposed to look like, they are terrifying. So obviously, Estella is my morality. She's the thing that keeps me on the straight and narrow, and of course helps me feel happy whenever I'm feeling down. And while I do love the whole thing where Thomas's morality and his anxiety seem to be the closest out of all the sides, I can honestly say that my creativity and morality are probably the closest. Since I can be extremely creative with my language, but my moral side keeps me from going too far. Though sometimes that doesn't always work, but eh, it is what it is. And next up we have my anxiety, which is the smallest out of all of them because she's a gnome. Yes, a gnome. Not a fairy or a pixie, a gnome. I decided to name her Pandora. And while this definitely would have been a better name for, like, my version of deceit, or maybe even my creativity, since creativity can feel like opening Pandora's box, it's more about the anxiety that escaped from Pandora's box than, well, anything else. And the reason I chose a gnome is because they're actually very small. Whenever I feel really anxious, I always feel like I want to shrink down and hide. And the best way to do that is obviously to be very small. This is actually one of the reasons that I enjoy the fact that I'm short. When I was little and whenever I got scared, it was always easier to hide away if I hid in places that somebody wouldn't normally look because they're such cramped spaces. And I've also had a really bad habit of literally hiding behind my hair. So she's literally a tiny walking hairball. I can imagine that Pandora just kind of pops out, out of places that you normally wouldn't think that she would be. Not exactly the whole popping up like they do on the show, but literally out of small spaces. Like, you open a cookie jar, there she is. And now for my final side, which is a griffin, because I didn't want to make her a sphinx, even though a sphinx would probably fit better. But either way, She's my logical, my philosophical, and theoretical side. And also probably the side that has the most OCD. And because I personally have a very hyperactive squirrel brain, odds are she would actually annoy Logan more than they would get along because of her tendency to spout out random facts and then not pay attention. But either way, here's Athena. And while in Sanderside's morality definitely seems to be the dad of the group, well, definitely the perky dad of the group, I honestly think Athena would take this role between the group, since my morality is more like a childlike innocence than a grown-up one. I can definitely imagine her trying to ring in the other two while anxiety just curls up in a corner waiting for everybody to calm down. And trust me when I say I argue with myself a lot, so I can definitely imagine that a lot of cat fights break out between my sides. <laughs> While uh, Estella is definitely my favorite side that I designed and colored, when it came to Athena, I actually decided to use both Belle and Beast from Beauty and the Beast as an example for her, col for, for, for her colors mouth which obviously out of all the characters is the most earthy and natural while i wanted her to make her what, what i cannot talk today while i wanted to make her seem pretty smart i didn't exactly make her obviously looking book smart i really wanted to make her look bright like Belle. Like, she has a straighter face, but you can definitely tell that she's definitely a bit book smart and generally tries to take things seriously. Obviously, personality-wise, I didn't take a lot from Beauty and the Beast, and it's mostly the colors, but I think it definitely plays off pretty well. And again, taking a note from Busy Pop, I made it look like her shirt that she wears under her dress just kind of blends into her feathers. 
Like it just kind of blends together. Which is still a trait that I really like to work with sometimes because it's kind of like it's a bit silly and unrealistic but still really cool to look at. But overall, Sander's size as a series as a whole is really good and if you haven't checked it out, I full heartedly recommend it. And I honestly wish that I had looked it up sooner. The way Thomas Sanders and his group portrays all the situations and explains everything in a way somebody can understand easily is definitely something really helpful. Like, it's psychology documentary mixing in teenage problems and a bit of Sesame Street. Something that's obviously really well thought out and something they genuinely want to put out because it's good. And they have fun with it, but they make sure to be as accurate as possible so that they don't give out false information. And honestly, I wish I had watched something like this back in high school. Though being 24, that was obviously quite a while ago. But either way, definitely watching this at the end of the year gave me a big pick-me-up. Though it definitely would have also helped if I had watched it throughout the year. <sighs> Obviously, 2020 was really stressful for absolutely everyone involved. From the people who work outside jobs to, obviously, even creators here on YouTube. With the whole pandemic because of the human malware and everybody not following the rules and all that. But putting that aside, Along with Sandersides, all the other content creators on YouTube who put in such hard work definitely helped out a lot during hard times. And obviously, I'm still going to have a lot of problems like worrying about whether or not I'm putting out my content fast enough, good enough, making sure everybody's enjoying it, and stressing out when I can't seem to get a project done. Obviously, that's all still going to happen, but thanks to everybody who's supported me this far, who's kept up with my content since I started posting, and all of that. Whether it's here on YouTube, on Instagram, or Tapas, uh, I can honestly say that all of you guys are always a big help with all of your great comments and everything. So, with all that said, I honestly don't know whether or not I'll use any of these characters again other than Calliope since obviously she's at this point pretty much the mascot of my channel, but overall it was really fun to draw all of these. When watching Sandersides, I related to a lot of the topics. And I can honestly say that I related to each of the sides in different ways. But when thinking over these characters, I realized a few things that I never really thought about about myself. I mean, they were things that I knew, but at the same time, I didn't give a lot of attention to. I don't know if I've said this yet, but... One thing that I'm definitely asked a lot is how I design such good characters, how I write such good stories, and all of that. And honestly, part of the reason is because they're one-shots. One-shot characters or one-shot stories help you get out an idea and kind of have it in place if you ever want to use it again. Like you have it written down and if you ever get creative with it again, you can always rewrite the story if you want to change a few things and expand on it. So, if you haven't watched Sandersides already, or if you like this video a lot, I definitely encourage you guys to kind of put in these kind of methods. Though it might be a help. Seriously, I cannot talk today! These are definitely things that have helped me out so far, and maybe they'll help you. And before I end the video, I'd like to give a big shout out and giant thanks to Thomas Sanders and his whole crew. I've had to record this a few times, so I don't know if I've already said that, but I'm saying it now. 
But I'd also like to give a big thanks to Alex from ABD Illustrates because honestly, he's the biggest reason I got into Sandersides in the first place. He makes seriously awesome content, so I definitely suggest you give him a look if you don't know who he is. Because he's also a really big inspiration when it came to doing the renovations on my channel and everything. If you can already tell. And I especially love his High Hope series that he does with his D&D buddies. Both him and Thomas Sanders and all the other creators here on YouTube definitely give me a lot of inspiration to continue my own series this year. 2021 is the year that I want to dedicate the most time to my Dear Fellow Travelers series. Oof, but again, if you don't know who they are, if you haven't watched any of their content, go check them out. And I hope that we can make 2021 a better year. So with all that said, I'd like to give a thanks to everybody who supports me on both Patreon and Tapas because money has definitely been tight, so the little bit of support that everybody is able to manage on both of those has been big help. And even if you can't support me with ink or money on either one, you can still definitely check out my content because I always love reading comments and knowing you guys are enjoying anything I put out, whether it's video stuff, comics, or stories. And if you don't have the money to support me financially, on Tapas you can support me with ink and I'll even let you guys commission me with ink. And now I'm going to stop self-promoting and end the video. So with all that said, watch out for the monsters under the bed. Hopefully we'll make 2021 a better year and I'll see all you jelly beans in the next video. Bye!